All right, buckle up. This is gonna be a big video. Maybe one of the biggest leak videos out of this channel so far because of how detailed the information about to be leaked is and how wide the scope of products being talked about today also is. And really what I'm going to do is start by talking about why mid-range GPU sales are bad and then tease some products Nvidia seems to be canceling in response to how bad some sales are but also in response to how strong some APUs are going to be next year. So we have a lot of big subjects to cover today, and let's get to the first one, RTX 4070 sales. Now, on the last news episode of Broken Cellcon, me and Dan basically concluded before sales even opened up officially that the 4070 seemed like at a minimum it was going to sell well below Nvidia's expectations. And I really didn't see a point in leaking anything until, well, a week had passed so that I could get a good look at the full picture and talk to not just a few sources, but dozens of sources about how this $600 mid-range graphics card is selling worldwide. And, well, here it is. One source who is not in the United States told me that they had roughly double the 4070 stock at launch compared to the 4080's launch week, and now most of them are just sitting in warehouses. Another source told me in the supply chain that 40,000 units were shipped to North America for launch, and that is about 50 to 100% more than were shipped for the 4080 launch. And that's an important number there. When people say, oh, 100 cards sold in some country. Keep in mind that typically NVIDIA would ship a similar amount to Europe or in Asia as well. Meaning that they probably shipped worldwide over 100,000 units. And at least 40,000 of them went to the U.S. And so... Well, when some retailers in the U.S., my third source tells me that they didn't even bother to stock the RTX 4070 at locations, and that up until now, they still haven't had one person call to ask if any are available, that's very bad news. It's not like NVIDIA just shipped 100 RTX 4070s to each country. They shipped thousands. 40,000 to North America specifically, and well, if we talk to a fourth source here who isn't in the U.S., they aren't selling. They have distribution warehouses waiting for storefronts to request them, and nobody is. Also, at the same time, it seems that 4070 Ti sales are dropping, but RDNA 2 sales are up, almost suggesting the 4070 launch was the best advertising NVIDIA could do for AMD's previous generation. Now, a fifth source told me who is in the US that they had less people line up at their brick and mortar store for the 4070 launch compared to the 4070 Ti launch, and that it's so bad that to this day, at least at their location, they have large brown shipping boxes full of various RTX 4070s that they haven't even got a box cutter out for to open to put on shelves because they have a bunch of open boxes that Still, no one has bought any cards from, and the most shocking piece of info came from one source here, also from a major U.S. retailer that told me the 4070 is a complete flop, but honestly, that there was a bigger story here. This person looked deep inside their system for which parts were selling day to day and week to week and told me that $500 plus parts just aren't selling anymore, and that in fact, multiple 40 series GPUs were returned this month. It seems like last month some people bought Lovelace's graphics cards and then they said, I don't really need this. I don't really use the ray tracing. And frankly, I could use extra money right now. So I'm going to return this and then I'm going to go buy an RDNA 2 graphics card. And those are the sources that would let me quote them. But the story is pretty uniform here. RDNA 2 sales are up in all regions, and Lovelace, especially the 4070, is selling well below expectations. And in some countries, like the United States, the 4070 seems like an utter flop. But speaking of specific countries and regions of sales, I do want to address one thing here after leaking this information about week 1 4070 sales, and it's a series of tweets from Tech Epiphany on Twitter about mine factory sales. Context matters. Now, to be clear, I suppose I can't even really be sure of if the info on that channel is legit, not because I have any reason to disregard it or doubt it, but just because literally I don't really know. But one thing I will say is, assuming they are legit, and they probably are legit numbers, mine factory sales are one 
data point. And my info involves multiple online and brick and mortar stores across multiple continents. And so I want to now point something out here for context. All right. If we look at Tech Epiphany Mine Factory sales from the 4070 Ti launch, well, would you look at that? RDNA 2 sales are going up relative to NVIDIA, just like my other contacts said. And in fact, the 4070 sales are not that different than what the 4070 Ti sales were earlier this year. So if you take into consideration context, the conclusion I would make by looking at that Tech Epiphany info is that GPU sales in Europe are terrible. You know, if NVIDIA sells or ships 40,000 RTX 4070s to a region, and then one of the biggest online retailers didn't even sell a 40th of what they shipped, NVIDIA is not considering that a success. The conclusion I draw is sales in Europe seem terrible, with many of these graphics card numbers shown here being less than what I've seen sold from a single micro center in the United States. And if anything, People in this part of the world seem to favor graphics cards with the highest efficiency more than people in the United States, which when I consider what's going on in Europe right now, yeah, I can understand why people there would be more worried about energy costs. And if they were going to buy a graphics card, they'd be more likely to just buy the most efficient ones or the cheapest ones, and they're not buying a whole lot of them. And so overall, when you take data from multiple continents and multiple retailers into consideration, with context, the 4070 is selling like absolute garbage, people. And RDNA 2, in fact, seems to be picking up in sales, at least relative to the 4070 sales, although it does just seem like sales are down in general right now. And I don't really find this surprising at all. Look, we're in a recession. And yeah, enthusiasts with money to burn may be more than excited enough to pay $1,000 for like a 30 to 40% performance increase at that tier with the 7900 XTX or to pay $1,500 or more for like a 70% performance increase from the 4090 over the previous gen flagships. But that's not mid-range. In the mid-range, in a recession, it just seems like people do not want to buy an upgrade unless they're getting significantly more for the same price they used to spend. And to be clear, I think this problem is going to plague AMD as they try to thread a needle segmenting the 7800 XT. I do think they're going to be forced to sell a Navi 31 16 gigabyte card for less than $600 because I don't know why anyone would care about something that was a little stronger than a 6900 XT unless it was that cheap. Or they're going to have to call a Navi 32 card that's really not much stronger than the 6800 XT, uh, the 7800 XT, and maybe charge $500 dollars for that class all of a sudden anything else i don't think people want it and you know if that's a trouble for amd and nvidia well i don't know what to say maybe the margins just aren't there for them to consider being aggressive with mid-range cards anymore in fact i was talking to an nvidia source this week about the mx series and this person confirmed to me that the mx series is indeed dead don't expect a lot more mx series cards in the future and they won't be making any more 108 dies. Now, I pointed out to this person that they could have almost certainly made a good basically half GA107 die that I think could have run circles around everything a year ago. And the person agreed with me, but then told me, well, they expected Meteor Lake to launch by early 2023. You know, when Pat Gelsinger announced that Meteor Lake took 30 minutes to power on, whatever that means, they're just pressing the button over and over. Uh, that they thought, well, okay, certainly a year or two later, this thing should be ready, but it wasn't. They didn't know Meteor Lake wasn't going to launch for years after that power on announcement. And this person told me that at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Meteor Lake is still expected to be performant enough that an MX series wouldn't make sense against that. And that any MX series they launch this year or next year is going to get blown away by Strix Halo. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, Strix Halo, that got me digging super hard into AMD APU information this week. And I dug up way more than I expected to that I want to talk about today. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Getting your daily vitamins can be tricky. 
Sometimes it can feel like you're just chewing on stuff that tastes like sticks all day in the hopes that you feel healthier tomorrow. Well, that is unless you're somebody like me who drinks the delicious nutritional drink AG1. If you're a fan of Moore's Law Z, I'm sure you'll have noticed that I tend to release videos and record podcasts late into the night whenever it's necessary. And in the past, that would often mean I was drinking coffee well past 8 p.m. in order to stay alert, and then my mind would just basically race until I finally got tired around 4 a.m. and went to bed. And, well, that's not what I do anymore. If you watch Broken Silicon, I'm sure you'll notice that I am now drinking AG1 while I record some of these late-night podcasts, and that's because it is a tasty daily microhabit that makes it easy for you to absorb key nutrients, lead a healthy lifestyle, and feel your best no matter what the day or night holds and no matter if you eat keto paleo vegan dairy free or gluten free ag1 is all of those things it contains vitamin k2 manganese b12 zinc and other energizing products to wake you up in the morning and b6 magnesium and other brain healthy ingredients that help me go to sleep if i am tired but needed to drink something to keep me awake while i worked late at night i have been using ag1 for months now and i genuinely do recommend it use my link below to get a one-year supply of immune support supporting vitamin d3 k2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase even just clicking on this link helps the channel a ton and buying ag1 through this link helps the channel even more seriously guys try it i do like this one it is tasty and it really does work so support moore's law is dead and support your health by getting ag1 through the link below today all right let's get right into this amd zen 5 strix leak to see why nvidia thinks mx graphics cards are a waste of time in the future but first as always some context since zen launched amd's focus has been to take as much server market share as possible while simultaneously making safe bets in other markets when it makes sense you see their server chips especially with early zen architectures they didn't just have very high margins the chiplet tech disproportionately advantaged them over intel's server products compared to intel's laptop products and by the end of 2023 though AMD already projects they may get to 35 to 40 percent server market share and that the remaining market could be harder to take from Intel. Also, AMD has more money now, enough money to spend in multiple segments. And so, well, they were looking into the future a couple years ago. They said, we think there may be more resistance in server and we also have more money. It's going to be time to push into laptop. And that's what they're doing next year. Remember, though, I can't emphasize this enough. Products are designed three to four years before release. When people were complaining about AMD using Vega and multiple APUs and not really shooting for the moon yet in laptop, it's because a lot of their early APU Zen architectures were designed in an era where AMD was worried they might go out of business. But that wasn't the case when they were designing Strix. They were fairly confident they'd be in a good place and be able to spend on much more bold designs that target specific parts of the mobility market. Now, a lot of the info I'm presenting today was assembled from a handful of recent and old presentations AMD has been showing to OEMs over the past, say, 6 to 12 months as they prepare their 2024 laptop designs. I'm mostly going to show the information on this PowerPoint here, but I will pop up parts of slide decks to prove that I have this information because well, I've been given the go-ahead to do that from some sources, and I don't want you to doubt this at all. There's been a lot of bad info out there recently about what Strix is going to be. This is the real stuff, and let's get into it. So first of all, I'm kind of just going to go in order of when things are coming out. Hawk Point. This is the mid-range successor to Phoenix, and they are calling this on their slide premium mobile but they call multiple things premium as usual because they want you to think everything that they have is premium and what you need to know is this is basically launching early next year a slight tweak to the four nanometer phoenix apu that is actually still yet to launch this month some older documents referred to hawk point as a phoenix plus architecture but i really wouldn't read too much into that right now i, I would see it the same way you see like the 7735 hs that's already launched this year faster clocked phoenix meant for the lower mid-range instead of last year where it was the upper mid-range now for the upper mid-range though they will have strix point this is a high-end successor to phoenix and that 15 to 45 watt premium mobility group and i'm told that although some early slides showed it launching maybe 
at the beginning of next year, it really sounds like it's more of a quarter two or quarter three product at this point, but I think it'll be worth the wait. It's going to be a monolithic 4 nanometer APU with 12 cores total, finally raising the core count for APUs. It should have four big Zen 5 cores and eight Zen 5C cores, according to one of my sources. It's a good source of mine, though. And the good news, though, about this is, is that it will still have 24 megabytes of L3 cache. Note that Phoenix with eight cores has 16 megabytes of L3. So they're not skimping on the cache, despite some of the cores being Zen 5C cores. Really, all they're doing is allowing some cores to have access to more cache and clock faster because it's rare that you really clock all 12 cores past 5 gigahertz at the same time. Anyways, this allows them to save die space, and it also allows them to save energy at the same time. And I'm actually told that the L3 could be unified anyway, so there really probably won't be any IPC difference between these cores. Just some take up less space and maybe clock to like 4 gigahertz instead of 5 gigahertz or something. And I am also... Someone who has seen an early Cinebench R23 benchmark. I'm not going to put it on screen here, but I will tell you guys that at least with early Silicon, Strix Point is already performing around 35% faster than Phoenix when both are limited to below 50 watts in multi-threading. And this APU also comes with 16 RDNA 3 Plus compute units, no Infinity Cache. But still, even without Infinity Cache, this thing is expected to trade blows with 35 watt variants of the RTX 3050 laptop GPU. And they think it will outperform at Meteor Lake's integrated graphics launching at the end of this year as well. Although I don't know if AMD is aware of Intel Adamantine. Uh, I'll get into it more later. I think that Strix Point is going to outperform Meteor Lake's integrated graphics at least by a little. But based on what I've seen internally, I do think AMD is underestimating Meteor Lake at least a little bit here. Anyways, 128-bit LPDDR5X memory controller, and it has a 20-tops AI engine. It's hard to find this information, but from what I could see, Phoenix is expected to have around 12 tops. So it's, I mean, depending on how you look at it, a big increase, but this isn't even remotely close to even mid-range AI graphics cards out there. This is not meant to be a super AI APU. It's just adding a better AI engine than Phoenix because AMD thinks that's common sense thing to do right now. And then, this is the big one, people, Strix Halo. And I actually do want to put this on screen here. AMD is specifically talking about Strix, or Strix Point, and Strix Halo as distinctly different products, with Strix being a monolithic 4 nanometer product, and Strix Halo using chiplets to finally, people, bring us a mega APU. This is something that is planned to scale basically across all TDP ranges you would expect for a laptop from 25 to 120 watts. Basically just being, hey, yeah, you can get something like Strix plus an RTX 4060 or you can get Strix Halo if you spend the extra money. And because it's a unified SOC, all controlled by AMD in-house and shipped with one piece of cooling, this thing will use way less energy, especially at idle. So this is the premium option for those who want the same performance, but don't want to have to plug in their laptop to game like a PS5. And I do think it could, but let me get more into the details specifically here. Again, it's a large chiplet APU. It has 16 cores of Zen 5, and in an early Cinebench R23 uh, test, Strix Halo performed 25% faster than 16-core Dragon Range when both were limited to less than 90 watts. I don't have more to say about the Zen 5 cores in this. I'll let you conclude what you want by that diagram, but do note that that diagram is a little old, and so I'm not entirely sure if it's a mix of Zen 5 or Zen 5C, but I do know it's 16 cores, and I do know it's 25% faster than Dragon Range. Additionally, they do plan to offer 12 core models, which will be above 28 watts. And then they're going to have below 28 watt models with eight cores and six cores. So yeah, again, this is planned to just be a better version of all laptops out there, directly competing with the efficiency Apple can give you by just making one big APU. And it does go up to 40 compute units with 32 megabytes of infinity cache. And these 40 compute units I saw on a slide are expected to compete with less than 95 watt 4070 laptops. I'll actually put something on screen that was a snippet I'm allowed to share. The 32 compute unit cut down model is planned to compete with less than 65 watt 
4060 laptops at least, and the 24 and 20 CU bottom yields is meant to compete with 4050 laptops. So you can see what they would do here. Yes, it can go up to 120 watts and take it to a high-end laptop while using half the energy, but with the worst yields and maybe just giving it a six-core CPU chiplet, they can offer you something that only uses 28 watts but still competes with like a 35 watt 4050 and a 35 watt cpu while only using 28 watts this thing is this thing is going to be awesome you're going to be able to game on battery people and yep it's supplied by 256 bit lpddr 5x memory controller as confirmed by the slide that i put on screen so this thing this is a beast. And when you look at this, 40 compute units, RDNA 3 Plus, not RDNA 2 in the PS5, and it has Infinity Cache and a 256-bit bus, I, I think this thing will perform like a PS5 or better, but be able to game on battery. And that's just, I'm, I'm so excited for this thing. It's too bad it seems to be coming out in the second half of next year. They wanted it to be early in that year, but it's slipping a bit. And uh, yep, 40 tops AI engine, but I'm not done, people. Let us get to Fire Range, the successor to Dragon Range, which is supposed to bring ultimate mobile compute launching around the same time as Strix Halo. This thing here uh, seems to have in some early slides said RDNA 3 Plus, but now I'm seeing slides that directly say RDNA 2. I can't show them, but I'm guessing they may have downgraded their plans for the Zen 5 IO die. I don't know what that really means. I know they still plan to support really fast memory, so I know they're at least changing the I.O. die probably for that. I don't think they're using the same one, but if they are, it's because the chiplets themselves can use faster RAM. And yeah, again, it's not going to be as ambitious as I thought it would be, just probably two RDNA 2 compute units and two 8-core Zen 5 chiplets. I've also seen reference to something called Kraken and Escher. I'm not even really sure how to say that, to be honest. And these are listed as successors to mainstream segments, at least on the PowerPoints I've seen. However, I have little information on them. And I do want to put a partially reconstructed version of an old PowerPoint I had to show basically what I think you should expect. You see, Mendocino, as far as I can tell, is going to be that dirt cheap offering all the way into at least early 2025. Then I'm kind of guessing they're going to cancel it and replace it with something else. And you can see there's something called Escher and Kraken replacing Rembrandt, Phoenix rebrands. And then above that, Strix Point, although they call both Strix Point and uh, Hawk Point Premium Mobile, at least on internal things at AMD, they think Strix Point is its own new premium tier above Phoenix, and that Fire Range and Strix Halo are also their own distinct product types. Uh, additionally, I am told that in addition to Strix Point 12 core and Strix Halo, that there is another SOC coming. Besides that, but I don't know anything else. I think there's going to be three distinct versions of Strix. I've been saying this in Broken Silicons for, I think, months now, but I still don't know what that third one is is but either way no matter what strix 3 ends up being in terms of its specifications i'm sure it will be something very specific that targets an exact part of the mobility lineup that amd really didn't have the focus or funding to target as specifically previous generations. Look, I've been someone who's defended AMD's laptop strategy and shipments for a while now. I think people, when they say AMD isn't trying to take laptop market share, have failed to Google the fact that they have taken laptop market share just about every year since Zen came out. They are taking laptop market share, but they are limited by how much money they were able to spend in the past to make the architectures they have today and by TSMC's capacity. But now we're in a world where TSMC doesn't seem to have capacity issues and a world where AMD has the money to make a bunch of really specific products all over the place. Not just make one Renoir APU and then next gen update it to Zen 3, but still give it Vega integrated graphics. That's not what we're seeing here. In 2024, AMD will have Phoenix Plus, Strix Point, Strix Halo, Fire Range, and eventually, I am told, some sort of Strix 3 product as well, in addition to Mendocino, like a $10 quad core for dirt cheap stuff, and eventually Escher and Kraken. They're going from making one or two APUs a year to seemingly making, I don't know what, depending on how you count it, like four to eight. And I think this is going to be a huge problem for Intel, which, yeah, gets us to the final part of any AMD leak video. Do I think Intel's screwed when it comes to competing with these products? 
Well, like I said earlier, when I teased adamantine, I do think that some people are underestimating how good Meteor Lake will be. You see, I wasn't going to actually talk about this until another video. I'm actually working on a pretty big Arrow Lake and later 14th, 15th, 16th gen thing right now with tons of stuff. But I did see that Pharonix leak talking about L4 cache and Meteor Lake. And I thought, that thing I already hinted in an earlier Battle Mage video... I should talk about it now, especially because, you know, months ago, I had someone telling me about adamantine that said, this is so well guarded that you can't talk about it until multiple people at Intel tell you about it because it's just, it's not safe. But now multiple people are telling me about it. It will probably come out soon. And in fact, it has almost already come out based on that leak about L4 cache on Meteor Lake. And I can tell you guys, it's adamantine. Adamantine was designed as a sort of Super L4 cache to be used on both CPUs and graphics cards. Uh, it's going to be made, I believe I was told, on Intel 16 and soon Intel 10 nanometer. And the goal is to, within a few years, offer a layer of L4 cache they can put on either a graphics card or CPU that gives you up to like 8 gigabytes or something. And they see this as a big deal to be used for their own architectures, but also outside architectures if anyone wants to make a graphics card on their nodes until may offer hey we can also put a layer of eight gigabytes of adamantine on there do you want that a lot of customers will in intel's opi opinion and let me put this quote on screen what i am told is that it's not just battle mage though although we don't really know if a battle mage uh, gpu will use this because i've heard a lot of them have been canceled but it does seem like they are testing 128 to 512 megabyte sizes for Meteor Lake. And that is why they are very, very confident they're going to at least double 96 execution unit performance from Raptor Lake to Meteor Lake at the same power when they launch these products. And so, yeah, I think, and again, I didn't even show you this slide, but AMD seems to think that, uh, at least they've recently seemed to think that Strix was going to crush Meteor Lake's iGPU and that Phoenix would might maybe even beat it. I don't really think so. I think Meteor Lake doubling the performance they currently have in integrated graphics. I think this is going to beat Phoenix, but that's the problem. I'm not sure by how much. When I look at online benchmarks, I see that their current integrated graphics are anywhere from 20 to 40% behind Rembrandt. And Phoenix should be 25 to 50% better than Rembrandt, getting you to around 1650 performance which I think Meteor Lake's going to exceed, but I don't know if that much. See, that's the problem with Intel right now. They have a lot of cool products, a lot of products that they'll power on one year, but they take years to actually release it. Meteor Lake, I'm directly told, was meant to edge out Phoenix, cost more, but be better. And I think it will probably be better than Phoenix. But Phoenix launches this month, and Strix launches about a year from now. I don't know, guys. I, I think Meteor Lake, if they can pull it up, which I'm told Pat keeps yelling they need to. If they can launch Meteor Lake in quarter three, yeah, you know, that gives Intel about half a year for Meteor Lake to do well in back to school sales and so on and so forth. But that's about all I can really say. They're going to use a Raptor Lake refresh for the high end extreme CPUs and laptop, even 8 plus 16. I think that's probably going to have trouble with Strix Point, let alone Strix Halo and Fire Range. So the top end of laptops gone. AMD will have more efficient options, they'll have better integrated graphics. I think Meteor Lake better come out as soon as possible because it's it's going to be wiped by Strix. And from what I'm hearing, you know, Arrow Lake has had some of its crazier designs canceled, and I don't really think Arrow Lake may even beat Strix Halo. I can't say for sure it won't yet, but it doesn't sound like it will. And, uh, well, I guess one more thing I will say then. I see no reason why, if Intel's worked with AMD before for a Vega tile for integrated graphics, they can't work with someone else for an integrated tile for some architecture after Arrow Lake. And when I see NVIDIA saying they're canceling the MX series, but they've been in talks with Intel to co-produce some products, I'm not saying this is going to happen because I don't know for a fact, but I do think that for the people worried about Intel canceling high-end Battle Mage and Celestial, which I've already heard high-end Celestial is gone, and so on and so forth, if they canceled high-end graphics development for the next few years, I see no reason why Intel can't go to NVIDIA and say, well, we have adamantine, we'll make Blackwell or Blackwell next, and if you make a tile for us, 
it'll be better because of our new L4 cache technology. And we can put that inside of Panther Lake or something around there. So that's one thing to say to the people lamenting the death of Arc, a graphics card that they are currently giving away with NVIDIA graphics cards because nobody wants them. Just know that there's nothing stopping NVIDIA from working with Intel here and keeping AMD in check if they run away with the laptop market after already seemingly starting to run away with the server market. But you know what? I'm getting into too much here. All of this will have to be discussed in another video. Make sure that you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss these upcoming Arrow Lake, Meteor Lake, Panther Lake, RDNA 4 soon, I'm pretty sure, and other leaks I'm putting together as well. You will not want to miss those. Like these videos. Share them. Please, this helps so much when we spread the word of how much effort we really put into on this channel and getting the information correct before we leak. Please share this information so that people see the correct stuff. And additionally, consider supporting us on Patreon. On Patreon, you'll get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, the ability to ask me and guest questions, the ability to ask free questions on loose ends, and exclusive videos and podcasts that are die shrink. One just came out today you know, at an hour long discussion about really interesting topics only for patrons. It's all there for you if you support us at just $2 a month. But for everyone else, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. <laughs>